Good morning and welcome to Ross Aid Stadium, home of Purdue football, and for just about three hours this afternoon, the temporary home of the Ohio State Buckeyes. I'm Tom Moore, joined by, joined by Tony Gerdeman at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Tony, obviously you can see, you can tell where Purdue is, there's a water tower with a big P on it, so there you go. Now, now you know, we have, we have established our, our location. And now we're going to talk about some news on the Ohio State Buckeyes and guys who we, we got news on Friday afternoon that Emeka Ogunko is definitely not going to be playing after injuring his leg last week. Not a real shock there. I think we've sort of been assuming that that was probably going to be the case all week. There is some news, though, that is a little surprising. Because earlier in the week, Ryan Day was asked, is Trey Van Henderson going to play? And it was sort of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now the report comes out, and Trey Van Henderson is listed as questionable. Yeah, questionable. It's a little disappointing to see uh, because everybody did expect him back. And now that he, he may still play, but... We're also talking about a, what, he's been a wet track, you yeah, know, well, so there's some yeah. concern there, and maybe that's part of the reason why, but yeah, they, uh, there's another reason why it's important to get him back that you, you might also want to talk about with the uh, availability report. Yeah, well, they, I mean, yeah, let's let's move on quickly to a couple of the guys who are out. Uh, one of them is Mayan Williams, out. So now if Trey Van Henderson does not go, it's Chip Trainum and Dallin Hayden and Evan Pryor in terms of healthy scholarship running backs for Ohio State. And that's, you know, you you, only, you need a pair and a spare, as they say, and they do have that. So you're not in a crisis mode right now, but you would probably prefer to not have one and three on the depth chart be the guys who are questionable or not playing. Yeah, and it's, it's still a concern, so even if Trey Van Henderson plays, how healthy is he? How long does he stay out there? Pretty dead, pretty dead. And if, is this going to be something where, you know, they shut him down last week because they didn't want anything to linger. What What is the difference here in terms of, well, we'll play him, is, is there no longer a threat of anything lingering? No, I mean, there, there still would be. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do. The, putting him as questionable I, gives them an out, mm -hmm. in a sense, without actually listing him out. But if they don't have him, um, you know, Purdue's run defense has not been very good this year. It, it is made worse by guys like Trigger and Henderson who can be explosive. But if he's playing, can he be explosive? And we've seen how ineffective he was last year when he was hurt and playing. We've seen how effective he is when he's healthy. Where is he on that list? He's, he doesn't seem to be 100% or else he would be listed as question. Well, and I wonder if the change in status is a function of the weather forecast because if we were down in Indianapolis last night and it rained cats and dogs for hours last night in Indianapolis and, and you know, it seems like looking at the radar we weren't here but it looked like it was similar conditions up here. I was down on the field earlier, and they don't you know, they have the field itself roped off, but there's you know grass on the edge of the field, and I just kind of tried to see, and it's a little slick down. I'm not wearing cleats or anything, but the, the field is wet and it's slick, and there's sort of a chance of rain showers kind of throughout the afternoon. It was just sort of 40 to 50% in any given hour, so you know probably not a monsoon, but a field that's probably, you know, the sun has not really been out today, so the field is not going to dry off in any meaningful way, and then right. you're going to get a little more water on there. It's not going to be standing water. I don't think it's, a, you know, the drainage here is pretty good. Purdue is famous for its prescription athletic turf, which they've had since the 70s, which was some proprietary drainage, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, no, not standing water, but wet grass is slippery. We've all walked on wet grass in the past, and if you've got any kind of health concerns, are you going to play it safe with Penn State on deck right. for Travion Henderson? Yeah, and it, it might be one of those things where, regardless of how Travion feels, it, the, the judgment will be how slick is the field. I mean, that's what is going to decide whether he plays or not. So, yeah, I, I think they would love to have him get the game under his belt before Penn State, but also you don't want to risk losing him or the game against Penn State because you need you need to be able to run the ball at 100% capacity because 100% capacity of Ohio State running game. It's not, it's not great, and being 70% of that is much worse. So they need him healthy against Penn State. I don't know that they need him healthy today. No, I mean, this is not an Ohio State run game that has a lot of excess capacity right now. So they, you know, it's it's like almost fine most of the time when Trevion Henderson's there. When he's not, it'll be a little bit challenging. You still, you do have Chip Granum. Chip Granum is the kind of big, strong back that I think would probably do fine even on a wet field. He is not. He is not much, you know, a guy who relies on cuts and that kind of stuff where you, you need to be able to really stick your foot in the ground and go. He just, you know, he's a little a little bit more straight line, so it probably won't impact him as much. 
is this one of the games we see Dallin Hayden? They have, they have kept Dallin Hayden, you know, off the field to preserve, you know, allow him to potentially preserve his redshirt and play only four games this season. Sure feels like this might be, you know, if, if Chip Cranham is your number one and Dallin Hayden is your number two, this feels like, boy, this might be a game where you go with Dallin Hayden. Or do you, is this an Evan Pryor game? Because Evan Pryor is more similar in terms of just style of back to Trevor Henderson. Uh, probably Xavier Johnson. Well, there's, <laughs> there's that too. There's yeah. that too, and which would allow them to get Carnell Tate on the field more. But I, uh, I would like to see... I, I think we'd all like to see Evan Pryor, but is this too big? Is a road game too big of a uh, situation for him? I don't know. Uh, the uh, Dallas Hayden, I understand what they're doing, and you don't want to waste anything, but also you're saving him in case you need him. And is this one of those in case, one of those cases where yeah. they need him? Um, or is this going to be 32 carries for chip trade? You know, he had 20 whatever last week. I think the uh, north south style might suit the, the, the conditions better, and maybe suit the Ohio State blocking scheme better. You know, not trying to stretch anything out too far and just to get north south and get there right away before the linebackers can maybe fill everything. I don't know. And use the RPO, use the quick, you know, sort of screen, bubble screen kind of game out to the wide receivers. As in, you know, they talk about those in terms of long handoffs and being extension in the run game. You might see more of that today. They just spread, you know, keep this field spread sideline to sideline that way and potentially open some stuff up the middle uh, for Chip Cranham. Uh, I'll just run down the list of uh, another guy uh, listed as uh, questionable. Um, we got sort of a late word on this. Yeah. Was Jaden McKenzie backup defensive lineman? So he's questionable. Um, that would be sort of a game time decision. Guys out today: oh, Nolan Bardo, TC Kathy, Emeka Oboku, we mentioned earlier, Keon Gray, Zach Herbstreit, Joe Royer. So it will be a uh, G Scott game for yeah. sure. Um, will Smith, Reese Stocksdale, Cole Williams, and Mike Williams. So. Joe yeah. Royer, a new day. Joe, yes, Joe Royer is a new name. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's good. good news, yes. So you know, you'll probably see Arbel Reese, number 20, on special teams, I'm guessing. He uh, he got hurt on what was it, yeah. I mean, like Youngstown State, just several weeks ago. So he's uh, he's someone who you'll probably, you'll probably see on special teams. But you know, no, no new names other than uh, Joe Royer, Mayan Williams, and Emeka Luka. Which is a little bit of a uh, other than that Mrs. Lincoln situation, right. but so, so with, with, with you know talk, it feels like we've kind of they, they talked about the Ohio State defense, defense a lot. So let's talk a little bit about the Ohio State defense going into this game. Purdue is not remarkable in any way, and they have the guy who is the guy who is their sort of bigger play running back is out for today. So you're going to be leading on sort of a similar type of back where it's not a big play back; it's more of a run run between the tackles kind of situation. Hudson Card, you know, former Texas quarterback, he has been okay, but not spectacular. Like 63 percent completion, seven yards per attempt, so not a lot of big hitters downfield. Mistake throw, six touchdowns, five interceptions. So, you know, this feels like an opportunity for the Ohio State defense to have another solid game because this does not. Need to, they're going to keep up in front of them and not give up the big play. This is not a big play offense. They, they played a big play offense last week and didn't give up any big play. So this feels like an opportunity for them to really. <laughs> make Purdue, if Purdue's going to score, Purdue's probably going to have to do it with a real methodical drive down the field. Yeah, you can count on them to probably eventually like overthrow a third and six, something mm -hmm. like that. Or, because this is what I think Tim Knowles is going to run into, you could do that. Or you could create havoc against a quarterback who doesn't handle havoc very well and create some ne negative plays right out of the gate. So we'll see, what, you'll do both, but like, which are you going to lean more towards? I don't think you need to create a bunch of chaos for there to be chaos, and you should be able to score enough points. I do wonder if, uh, if this is a tight game, does the defense get tighter or more aggressive? Probably, I'm going to say gets tighter because you're trying to, I mean, I guess it depends on what, what, direct, what shape does the tight game take. Is the tight game 17 to 13 or is it tight game 30 to 28? This doesn't feel like a 30 to no. 28 game. And, yeah. So if it's tight, it's probably if the defense is playing pretty well and the offense is sort of sluggish and not, you know a little slow to get started. And that, that's something we've seen in this stadium many times over the years, many, many times over the years. It, and this is an Ohio State team that has started slowly in several games recently. They were down 10 nothing to uh, Maryland last week. Ten, down 10 nothing had got, you know, Maryland had the ball with a 10-point lead and was getting the ball after halftime. That seemed like a, you know, oh boy kind of situation. And then... 
Josh Proctor had a pick six and the game completely swung. Boy, it, this would be if Ohio State was going to you know, if Ohio State was going to choose one of the next two games to uh, get off to a quick start, and they would definitely choose next week. But if Ohio State was to choose two of the next two weeks yeah. to get off to a quick start, and this would be a good week to get it. Just you know, if they're up ten nothing after the first quarter, this you know the, the whole feel of this game is so different. Yeah, but you also have to keep your foot on the pedal. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't want to get up ten nothing and ah we made it. Yeah, and start coasting. So. Can you think of any examples from, uh, say, the western third of the United States last night that might be illustrative of that fact? You know, if, if anybody watched it, and people did watch Colorado, so you know, if they stayed up late enough to watch it, I did not. I, you know, but there, there are plenty of lessons around to not just let off the gas. Oh, yeah. uh, so this would be one of them. But yeah, if they can get out to an early start, that, that you know, creates an enthusiasm with the defense, with the offense. Uh, I feel, I'm interested to see how it affects these special teams in terms of Mecca and Buka's absence. Yeah. You know, with Jaden Ballard perhaps being the, the punt returner, trying to create plays and show that he maybe the, the eagerness to create a play, I think, could, could it, there's some boomer bust potential right there. And he's a guy that could take it to distance or also perhaps muck luck in trying to take yeah. it to distance. Wet field, wet football. <laughs> Are you pressing a little bit? Do, do they tell him just go back and catch it? They, that that seems like that might not be a terrible uh, move today. And again, you, you see how the game goes. Mm -hmm. and if, if the offense is really struggling, maybe you do need that 20 yards of field position or the opportunity for that 20 yards of field position. But yeah, there, there is, I'm sure, college football coaches are always a fairly risk averse group. I'm sure looking at road game, wet conditions, catch it. A punt returner who has not done a lot of punt returning in the past, he, it feels like you might lean towards just catch it. Uh, we have talked about predictions. We're both kind of in the same neighborhood. I, I went 31-17 Ohio State, and I'm, I'm sort of, I feel like I might be high on the Purdue side, unless you know, unless they get a defensive score or get set up with a short field or something. It feels like that might be a little high, but you know, I would be pleasantly surprised if the Ohio State offense materially exceeded. 31 points. You know, if they got into right. the 40s, that would, uh, you know, that would be a little like, oh, yeah, okay, that that maybe means something, especially if it happens a little bit on the ground. Yeah, I, I went 34-13 with the expectation that the defense is going to give the Ohio State offense a shorter field. So you know, the potential is there for the points, but as we keep saying all week, we still need to, I just want to see it. I want to see the offense light it up as they have for many, many years and as they have yet to do, except for one game against the worst defense they've faced all year. So we'll, we will uh, be keeping an eye on all that stuff for you at BuckeyeHuddle.com throughout the day. Have content coverage uh, on the site. And then, of course, uh, have our usual post-game show after the game live here from Boston Stadium. Starting right after the game, uh, including interviews with Brian Day, Ohio State players. Try to get some Ryan Walters in there for you as well if we can make that all work. But we'll uh, be here at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle immediately after the game. With all of that, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Hit that thumbs up. That will help us uh, help other folks find these videos. And that would be a nice thing that you can do that we we'll truly appreciate. And then also make sure you hit that bell so that when we go live after the game, you get notified and you don't miss any of the post-game show. So that will do it for now. We will see you guys after the game.